downs. First and 10, officially from the 49. Aguilar is pressured. Rolls to the right, a man misses him. Throws downfield, Roberts. Oh, he is lit up by Blaine Myrick. And the pass falls incomplete, and Blaine absolutely clobbered him at the 45. And that was completely legal too, JT. That was a great tackle. So. Aguilar to pass, quick throw near side. Oh, what a hit of Marion Fortenberry. Absolutely lays him out for a loss of one. Oh my goodness, the freshman laid the lumber. You don't see cornerbacks making tackles like that very often, JT. Man, that was lead with the shoulder, a great form tackle. Pick him up in the air and put him down. You know, just really, really proud of our team. Really proud of our team and staff, uh, the way they prepared last week, the, the output, the performance, uh, the consistency and effort, the consistency and toughness. There's some things in that game that we all know as a team and staff, we've got to go back and correct, and we've got to focus on those things. And, um, you know, we talked about it, the defensive staff, this, or excuse me, defensive unit meeting this morning. You know, when you lose, it's magnified. When you win, it's minimized. But regardless, the issues are still there. So we've got to go back and fix those things. Um, and, and, and just continue to see the same growth and development that we've seen in the first four weeks. And, you know, either you're fat and happy or you're humble and hungry, and that's, you know, that's the way we're going to approach it. Obviously, it's a, a different opponent, different, uh, you know, bigger atmosphere, but what did you learn going into App State that maybe you guys could take going into the Bedlam? Uh, I think the players felt that environment. You know, it was it was packed. It was loud. It was Thursday night. It was it was all that. Um, and I think at the end of the game, like that, if they're all honest with themselves, it really didn't matter. You know, um, you just go out there and play. And when you get out there, and the, you know, you may see it all, but when you start playing, I mean, you, your peripheral is pretty tight. You know, you're not paying attention past the second row in the stands. I mean, you're you're there on the field, and that's where your focus is. And uh, that's the way our team played, and they need to play the same way. There'll be you know sixty thousand more than there were last week, but you know, it's a field, it's our home. You know, those are, those are things that are always going to be there. You know, it's, it's every game. Whether you're battling an empty stadium or you're battling a full stadium, again, as a competitor, the maturity of understanding where you're at, what matters and what doesn't matter. And so we need to go out there and, and execute and, and prepare this week the same way we did last week and, uh, and go play. Have you seen a difference in the confidence level of the guys the last couple of weeks? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen, I've seen, you know, confidence is, you know, usually you gain it after you do it, right? That's probably the hardest, one of the hardest things to do in coaching is, is try to get someone to have some confidence before they go out there and do it. Um, but like, like I mentioned earlier, we've got a lot of good players. They're believing in themselves more and more. They're starting to limit some of their mistakes. Uh, we're far from a finished product, but uh, I see a lot of confidence, you know, gaining uh, in a lot of younger players and even some older players. What have been the areas that you've seen the biggest jump from from game one to now? Probably say communication on defense, um, communication, understanding kind of what your opponent's going to give you, what our plan is to try to take that away, and more of an understanding of the game plan uh, from the back end standpoint in terms of linebackers, safeties, corners. Um, you know, that's that's some of the growth. Um, you know, running the running the ball. You know, when you, when you start a season, there's not a lot of tackling in, the, in fall camp because you don't want to injure your team. But as you start to get reps in the game, I think our run game, our backs are getting better and better each week in terms of running through things, seeing things uh, in the run game. Geo is getting better the more reps he gets. Uh, I just see a lot of the younger guys, like we were talking earlier, just taking the right strides, playing the game, coming back in Sunday, finding those two, three, four bullet points that I need to be deliberate on all next week through practice to kind of prevent from making the same mistake twice. And, and I just see that intentional thought process by our players, and it's helping them grow. And as a coach, you just want to keep that environment where you know, it's about growth right now. It's continuing to grow and grow and grow as the season goes along and getting better. Um, I even asked about Baton Rouge already, but I, I think when I talked to you before, you said you'd never coached there. Mm -mm. How much time have you spent there as a fan or that sort of stuff growing up? A lot. I spent, um, you know, Every Saturday that I could, you know, I, I was over there in the south end zone uh, watching every LSU game that I could. Um, I didn't grow up an LSU fan, but I, I pulled for LSU anytime they weren't playing Alabama. Um, but I love Tiger Stadium. All my friends are LSU fans growing up. Um, you know, we used to go over there my junior and senior year. I'd go over there and throw seven on seven with LSU's players in high school. 
you know, just loved growing up there. Can't say anything, you know, it was just a great experience. Um, hadn't seen much of Bam the last couple of weeks. I don't think he played at all at half. What's his status? You know, coming back from shoulder, um, but he is, uh, he's pretty much there now. You know, but just didn't want to, you know, there's no reason to force anything in an 87-10 win. And then when things were starting to get out of hand the other night, it's still, it's, all right, well, what's, you know, do we want to put him in for these plays? I mean, wouldn't it be better that he stays healthy another week and then we can get him back the following week where he's 100%. So it's good to see him back to, to 100% today. LSU, just uh, personnel-wise, what, what do you see? Oh, you know, defensively, they're, they're, they've always, you know, since the beginning of time, always been extremely athletic. You know, they run well. They rush the passer very well. Uh, stout at the point of attack. A lot of man coverage. Uh, I mean, they're going to get off the bus playing man coverage, you know, a few snaps of zone here and there. A lot of pressure, um, you know, third down, they're going to come after the quarterback. Got a lot of good pass rushers. Um, offensively, have always had skill out there. You know, growing up watching Wendell Davis and all those guys all the way through. They've always had good wide receiver play. Um, you know, their backs are solid. I know they've had some injuries, but they're, whoever they're still playing is pretty damn good. I'm watching these guys run through tackles, get down the field. So, you know, they've got a stable of those guys. Offensive line, uh, great in pass protection, good in the run game. Uh, quarterback's super accurate. Um, you know, I enjoyed watching him play. You know, he can, he can deliver the ball. You know, very talented team. Uh, when they're hitting on all cylinders, they are really tough to beat. Just a lot of exposure, you know, like they've been exposed to so much, you know, whether it be X's and O's, their own dad's issues, good or bad successes. They just got so much built in inherent knowledge of the game where, you know, maybe the first time something gets presented to him or his teammates, it ain't the first time he's seen it. Now, maybe the first time his teammates have heard about something like that, but just that, you know, overall just experience from your father, you know, I mean, Chandler's seen his dad open up field houses. He's seen his dad get a job at SMU. He's seen his dad get a promotion to Arkansas. He's seen his dad get let go. I mean, he's seen all those things, and all those things create who you are. And so I think, you know, that just builds maturity in you, uh, builds you beyond your years, and that's what you see on, in his level of play. I mean, you see, you see some mature play out there from him. Uh, well, it's LSU. I mean, fast and physical. I mean, they're they're. They can play, you know. Um, defense line's active. Bo Davis, the D-line coach. Um, he was, I was with him at Alabama. That's about what you would expect. Uh, they, they play really hard, get after it, create a lot of negative plays, a lot of sacks. Um, secondary's got length. You know, they can fly around, make plays on the ball. Linebackers are about what you think they are. You know, they, they can run sideline to sideline. Couple of times. Yeah, it's probably one of the uh, Tiger Stadium. It's probably one of the more exciting venues uh, to play in. Um, chance of rain is never. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's exciting. I mean, if you love college football, if you'd like to compete, um, this is certainly one of the places you want to play at. And you play at night there. Yeah, and at night's a little it's a little different at night. It's it was loud regardless. I think my senior year we played them two thirty kickoff. They ended up getting us in the fourth quarter. Um so it's loud regardless, but at night it's uh probably one of the better atmospheres. Uh we won the game, but it was I believe twenty eighteen. Uh we played a night game there and it was it was rocking. Um I know you got the helmet communicator now, so maybe that helps a little bit just in terms of the loudness communication, how big a deal is that going to be? Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's an issue. They, they, this is one of those stadiums. They make it, they make it hard. Um, I think the big thing with that is just, you know, I see you're going to use a lot of signals, uh, um, but clear communication, um, making sure everybody's on the same page. Um, you know, we're, this certainly we're, something we're going to have to work on this week. Can you cover up the progression of the offensive line over these past four weeks, especially with what they did uh, uh, <laughs> with what they did Thursday night? 
Well, you know, that, uh, I think the thing that, you know, we, we certainly have seen is when we're on the same page, um, you know, we're, we're, we got a chance. I'll put it that way. We got a, we got a real chance. Um, you know, they're, they're playing hard. They're playing really, you know, physical. Um, you know, they're like every other position, every other group. There's some stuff we got to clean up, but really proud of them. Um, and, uh, you know, they've had a unique couple of weeks, and they got a, a pretty good challenge this week. But to go from kind of pretty radically different defenses week to week, um, from a three safety structure to a four down, back to 3-3 three, three stack. Now, and last week it was traditional odd, but they were stemming quite a bit. Um, you, know, you plug on the tape, there we're, we're communicating, um, and generally we're on the right guys. Um, so for a group that you know hasn't played probably, you know, going into the season a lot of snaps together, um, it's been really cool to see the way they've gelled. Um, you know, and we just gotta like like the rest of the offense, we just gotta continue to grow and and, and improve each week. We talk about it every time we come in here, just the growth and you know the the practice intensity continues to grow, which pays off on game day. And you know when when the guys, I think there was a belief there was. The pra when you came out to practice on, I'm going to say Monday, right? It wasn't Monday. It was a weird week. But as you came through the practice days, the confidence grew. The in you know the intensity was there all week, and I think we saw that pay off for us on game day. And you know I thought the guys executed at a high level. And again, kind of like we talked about last week, the guys that were freshmen aren't freshmen anymore. They've played four games now. They've got to be you know grizzled vets, and you know they've got scars and they've got some wounds and. You know, the obviously, you know, you always look back and always want more. That's kind of the, the dark side of being a football coach is it's never good enough. And, you know, I want the, the, the last throw of the first half back, and I want that last drive of the, the, with the twos back at the end of the game, you know. But at the end of the day, that's, it's, a learning, it's a learning experience for those guys of, hey, when I get my shot to get out on the field, there, there has to be the same mental intensity. There has to be the same – uh, physicality. There has to be the same standard that we play with as a defense, because when I get my shot, I'm trying to prove to everybody else that I earned that shot. You know, Coach Applewhite always talks about when when guys go in, either two things get said, like, "Heck yeah, we're we're glad this guy's in the game," or "Oh no," we're, you know. And so I think we're still trying to build that mentality of when I go in the game, everybody's going, "All right, yeah, my, this guy's finally getting a shot," and they're excited for that person. So. You know, back to it, I think just the growth has been phenomenal. The guys are, are working extremely hard, and, and obviously with the big challenge this week, we're going to have to work even harder. <laughs> Everything? Um, no, they're good. Obviously, they're well coached. Coach Kelly's been doing it a long time, and, um, you know, they give you so many. It's, it's good because our offense shifts in motion, so you get some of that, um, which is what they're going to do. But... With Nussmeyer back there behind center, man, he's got the arm talent, can make all the throws, and he's got a lot of weapons around him. Um, and and the, you know they, they haven't given up very many sacks this year, so they're obviously a lead up front and, and do a lot of good things. And so we're going to have to to buckle down and, and create some pressure, some different unique types of ways, and, and do some different things that that are going to be advantageous for us. Yeah, I think part of that was some of the coverage aspect. And then, you know, some of that was, you know, we felt like after the game, just looking back at it, that the only way that we were going to lose to App was, was if we gave up a bunch of big explosive plays. And so that was kind of the emphasis of the week was keep the ball in front of us and knock out the run. We knew they were going to run the ball. We knew that they were going to try to take the big post over shots and things like that. And so it was like, okay, well, let's play with great eyes, stay top down. And that was, I think, when, when, they, when they held on to it, that's why you saw Aguilar scrambling a good bit the other night, was we were on top of those routes and we were in good position on the back end, which allowed him to pat the ball a little bit, which allowed the big guys up front to get back there and, and make some plays. Yeah, I mean, the nice part for us defensively is normally when the other team's offense is out, they're not screaming too loud. And so for us, it's probably a little bit different than it would be for, say, the offense. Um, you know, just because, 
they want their offense to succeed. So they're not going to be as loud when they're on the field. And so for us, it's – but I think that's paramount no matter whether it's loud or quiet. You know, we put an emphasis on it, whether we're in a walkthrough during a, a Tuesday practice or, or on game day of having volume. and Because there are checks involved with defense when there's moving parts. And so I think that's a, an extreme – you know, we, it's a big attention to detail thing for us as coaches, and we have to take ownership of that is because we always talk about defensively that volume equals confidence, and volume also it builds trust. Because if I'm talking louder and know my job, then the guy next to me, whether to the right or the left, knows that I know my job if I can, can, can communicate that. Well, yes, sir. Uh, definitely looking forward to it. It's a great opportunity. You know, kind of remind me of um, going up to play Tennessee in um, with 2021. So, you know, it's. There's nothing, nothing to be, you know, not mind blown about, but you know, just going to play another game. Talk about the confidence that you guys have built over the last four weeks. Yes, sir. Um, you know, just going from week one to week four, uh, just continue to improve on the things that you know that we did wrong. And uh, like Coach said, you know, winning um, or losing magnifies the problem, and you know, winning minimizes it. But you know, it's still there. You know, it's our job to go out and focus on it and get it fixed from week to week. What can you take away from the Cavs game and maybe even Oklahoma State last year going on the road and against the previous opponent? Well, um, you know, just don't kind of minimize the outside factors. You know, don't let the crowd determine how you play. Um, you know, just kind of look past that type of stuff. And, you know, it would be good to do your 111. Yes, sir. I mean, it's just confidence. You know, they, they get more snaps than they ever have in, the, in a career. So, you know, they, they settle in more. Um, at the more snaps they get, the more experience they get, the better they're going to play. So, yes, sir. With, uh, LSU, when you watch them on film, what's your... um, definitely a solid group. Probably the best we've seen uh, this far, for sure. Um, offensive line-wise, tackles, they tackles pretty good. So, it's, it's going to be a challenge, you know. Definitely from a physicality standpoint, and you know, just doing your job. I feel like it's coming from just just like the daily deposits we've been putting in since fall camp. You feel me? Just coming to the line. You feel me? Every day and answering that call. You feel me? And uh, and just just being able just just being ready to go. You feel me? At, at, at any point's notice. I feel like all of that kind of has been building up our confidence from week one to now, and I feel like that confidence is going to be key during this game. Playing an uh, opponent like LSU, we're going to have to come out. You know. Ready. I'm sure you grew up a lot of, around a lot of LSU fans in yeah. the world. Maybe even one, were one yourself, I don't know. No. What, <laughs> Not uh, an LSU fan. How much do you look forward to this, just kind of kind of going back home and, and I'm sure a lot of your friends will be paying attention to this? Oh, yeah. That, honestly, it feels amazing. Like, actually, like, I played, like, uh, I, I played with a D lineman in high school. We we're on the same team. He's actually a D lineman at LSU. Like, I know a lot of guys that play there. Um, like you said, I'm from there. Not a big LSU fan, but it just it, it means a lot to be able to go back back to the boot and uh and play a, in front of a crowd like that. What can you take from maybe some of the places you played in the Big Ten going over to LSU? Um, I don't know, man. Uh, I've only like the only closest thing to LSU that I played at is Michigan. Uh, and I know I know it's gonna be rocking. You feel me? That's only, I, know, I know that if I know if I don't know nothing, I know that it's gonna be rocking. So. Um, I feel like we've made uh made some improvements, but you know what I'm saying like like kind of like what everybody else says like it's, it's not enough. You feel me? There's still more things out there to be done. More there's still there we still have a lot to get better at. You feel me? We've uh we've 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 made some steps, but we still have a whole a whole flight of stairs to uh to go up.